That been years for can only use the RX100 for their flocking leader because this is a one inch sensor. This is a quite large sensor for a compact camera. But what if you can do similar thing or the same thing with Insert 360 1R 1 inch sensor module? Other than the 1 inch sensor, this actually has a Leica co engineer lens with Leica. When Sony has a size, Insta360 has Leica. This is a Super Elma A 14mm f3.2 lens. You can see the camera itself, it is actually a little bit bigger than the normal, the normal action camera module from Insta360R. It's a little bit thicker at the back. But I like that. Oh, oh also, it has a really huge protective thing. In front, this is just a tiny little bit. This is this is huge, and this you can remove it. Well, I quite like that it got a huge protective thing in the front because I actually dropped this. Surprisingly, it didn't disintegrate into three parts like a Nokia mobile phones. Remember those? It was without the protective backer as well. I dropped it on pebbles, not just any. I, it's not any soft surface is hard and not even as well. It actually scratch a little bit, but of course you rather scratch this than this. And this is quite chunky. This is quite it got some weight on it. And I like that even though the lens stick out is stick out a little bit at the back, it still fits inside the same bracket as the other Insta 360R module. Put this back on it. Well you have to remove this before you put in or out of the bracket. I also hope that they will release this kind of protective thing with ND filter on it or even an adapter that you can put your filter on it. That would be great. Now you have 5 meters waterproofing. It's the, it's the same as other Insta360R and it's the same that it only do that when you put it on inside this bracket. And also, I have to remind you that if you look at that website, they mentioned that this is good for ringing, obviously, and also like poolside activity. So if you're doing anything like surfing, wakeboarding, whatever, water sport, you will want to get the diving case for it, which gives you 60, 60 meters of waterproofing. Well, I haven't mentioned that this screen, you can flip it around, but not during recording. You have to turn it off, you have to take out the battery, flip it, and put the battery back on. So yeah, you can reverse the screen, but you have to turn it off to do that. Actually, that's much more than that. Especially if you have an external mic, you have to disconnect it, remove the lens protection, unlock the bracket, and then forgot to close the port cover. Finally, remove the camera and change the battery. Make sure you have the battery really secure on the camera, and then put the camera back into the bracket. Lock the bracket securely, put the lens protection back on, open the port cover if you still have your fingernails with you. A small price to pay when you have a small camera like this, I guess. Well, wow, okay, one good thing about modular design is that if you want to shoot 360 later, just buy the 360 mod without buying a whole new 360 camera. Oh, by the way, this can do 4K 60, which is great, and it can do 5.3K, which is great, because even if I'm shooting, even if I'm delivering 4K video right now, I can crop in, I can do open gate editing, which I always love doing that. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> now directing comparing the Insta360R and the RX100, I don't think that is really a large huge difference between the image quality. Probably the biggest difference is the widest of the lens. The widest? <laughs> or the widest of the lens. The RX100 is only 24 millimeters equivalent. So it's a little bit, I think it's just a little bit tight for doing selfie vlogging. The Insta 361 r you can actually choose the view angle. Just like their own action camera and many other action camera, you can do this. Although this is wider than their own action camera, 14 millimeters, or you can choose wide around 15 millimeters. Now I don't have the actual figure, I just figured it out myself. And the really useful linear around 19mm 
or narrow around 23 millimeters, which you don't have on the action camera module. While we are at this, we can really compare to the RX100 Mark VI that I have. I think the dynamic range is really similar. If we look at steel frame and enlarge, you can see artifact created by over sharpening from the Insta360 footage. Even I was shooting log right there. With the RX100, you can apply sharp length for the exact amount as you want, which is one of the reasons you shoot with log. Although I have to say this is Insta360's first actual camera camera, which I'm amazed how close they look. Although one thing about the Insta360 one inch module, it has nothing to do with image quality, but it's probably not made for vlogging or selfie because the closer focusing distance is 90 centimeters. If you look closer, it is actually focused at the background. So it is more for shooting everything else. You can technically use a selfie stick, but it will be half body shot and it will be annoying. In fact, the RX100, you can get a little bit of shallow depth of field and maybe add some stabilization in pose. And of course, the Insta 361R, you can see the stabilization is much, it's much better than the RX100. Now, the stabilization, I think, is a little bit unnatural. Oh, cow shit. I'm not joking, that's cow shit. <laughs> I think it's similar to other action camera stabilization as well. You kind of, you will notice that there is some stabilization happening in the, in the video, in the finished video. Rather than it is so natural that you thought the, you thought the photographer is actually that stable. I will hope that they add an option in the menu that you can set how much stabilization you want. If I can dial it down to have a little bit, of, a little bit more of movement that I think it will make it a little bit more natural. One thing really quite annoying though is that it's safe with their own format rather than MP4 or even MOV format. So you have to use their phone app or desktop app to convert. Well, the advantage is that you can actually pick the angle of view here or choose to apply or not apply stabilization here when you export. But the downside is that you have to export. And on my 27 inch iMac 2017 model, it takes more than double of the duration of the footage to export. They just recently added the ability to save as MP4 on the 4K wide-angle action camera module, but with a less stable stabilization because all the stabilization has to do in camera. But I don't really mind. I really hope they will add this feature on the 1-inch sensor module as well. How about compare the low-light capability of the RX100 and the Insta360 1R 1 inch. And for this, again, I'm amazed by how close the Insta360 do compared to the RX100. For audio recording, I have mentioned that in my main video about Insta360 1R. You can check it out there. I'm not going to repeat the whole thing here. But in short, the built in mic is much better than the old 1X. You can finally use external mic with an adapter. It support AirPods, but for now, you don't want to use that. I just hope that they will keep improving the firmware, they keep, keep improving this feature, full firmware updates, and finally, we can use AirPods for my. Now, as this has a 1-inch sensor, can you use, really use it like a RX100 to take photos? One problem with the RAW is that it do, it do PNG RAW, but one problem is that it takes time to save the RAW. It remind me of those, um, it remind me of my first Weco GR camera that whenever I shoot RAW, around 10 seconds to save the RAW. Uh, not that long for this, it takes around one or two seconds, but still a little bit annoying. Well, I mean the two seconds saving the raw is actually a little bit like shooting film when you have to manually wind it. I mean it's not a big problem because a lot of time when you're shooting uh, street photography, you don't use burst anyway. But with other camera, you can like like pump 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 a few. You can take a few shot. You can take three shot and then pick the the best one. But 
this is just got one shot basically. It's really like film. You have to just get that one shot because it's, it, you won't be fast enough to wind it. Well, of course, some film camera got motor winding, but I, what I mean is manual cameras. Manual. If you should roll out, Adobe Lightroom support that. And because you should roll, you will get fish eye photo even if you set linear in the camera setting. That's only effect JPEG. I find that the normal distortion correction is not enough to correct this fish eye. I found out the workaround is apply a GoPro profile and then adjust, still adjust a little bit. It seems like it's even more fish eye than GoPro. Comparing this to the RX100 Mark 6, I think they look really similar. I think the RX100 still got a slight edge on color. But come on, they are so close. But of course, what Insta360 doesn't have is a zoom lens. Now this Insta 360 One R supposed to be like more jeweler. You buy this pack with a 360 with an action camera, but this one inch almost like its own product. You can basically forget about if you don't need the 360, if you don't need an action camera, you can just ignore all that and buy this as its own product. You can view this as a really small one inch sensor camera, and it is. I'm amazed the quality is so close to a RX100, Sony have this RX100 for years and this is Insta360's first ever camera. Of course, it got its shortcoming. I really want to use it like a selfie camera for, for vlogging. If I can just hold it like this and then do vlogging, it will be great. But the closest focusing distance, 19 centimeters, is not really for selfie. But still, it gives you amazing image quality comparable to RX100, but an um, amazing price. Much cheaper than RX100, much cheaper than RX0. It is really great for a second camera. And I mean, if I just think of if they can turn this into a close focusing distance adapter, then this will be good for selfie as well. Now before I end, I have to thank you everyone who support me on the Patreon, Patreon, and the YouTube membership thing. All the all your support is going back into making this channel. So if you want to chip in, if you like this, like my content, you want to help out, check out my Patreon page with the link in the description and the join button next to the subscribe button. That's for the YouTube membership. One thing I'm really quite impressed is how are they managed to improve the indoor 360 stabilization 